Beneath the surface of an early spring stream, strange and ancient creatures dart in the current, moving pebbles with their mouths. Though they may look like snakes or eels, these are lampreys, members of a very unique and ancient group of fish. If you live in North America, you have likely heard of lampreys as nasty, invasive parasites that feed on the blood and flesh of other fish. Sea lamprey, which are native to the Atlantic Ocean and eastern seaboard of North America, colonized the Great Lakes after humans removed the natural barriers to their movement there and replaced them with canals and locks for easier transportation. In the Great Lakes, they have caused problems, as the local ecosystem did not evolve with sea lampreys, and the fish there exhibit increased mortality from sea lamprey feeding. But the Great Lakes and Midwest have many other species of lamprey that are native and valuable parts of the ecosystem, many of them not even parasitic. Lampreys are so unique because they lack many of the features we associate with modern fish and use to identify them. They do not have any paired fins or scales. Their gills lack coverings and are simple holes in their torso. They do not even have jaws. Instead, they have a fleshy oral disc with varying amounts of teeth lining the interior. Parasitic species, such as sea lamprey, have many teeth in their disc and use these to hold on to fish while they attach and feed on their bodily fluids and tissues. But of the 38 species of lampreys existing today, more than half are not parasitic. Lampreys lack many of the characteristics of modern fish because they represent a very primitive lineage of vertebrates. Along with hagfish, which live on the deep sea floor, lampreys are the only surviving members of a group of jawless vertebrates. They have changed very little since appearing in the fossil record. This 300 million year old fossil lamprey is comparable to a modern species. The non-parasitic species are typically known as brook lampreys. The least brook lamprey, found in the eastern United States, is a non-parasitic species. Their oral discs contain only a few teeth, as they are not needed for attaching to larger fish. Lampreys start their lives as larvae, known as amocytes. They look quite different from the adults, and may even look more like a worm than a fish. They even lack external eyes, though they are hidden beneath a layer of skin. Once the amocytes hatch from their eggs, they burrow into the sediment of slow backwater pools, often with large amounts of organic matter present. They will remain buried for three to seven years, growing by filter feeding from their burrows on the organic material in the water. Here, the gills can be seen moving, forcing water over themselves to provide the larva with oxygen. This is also how the amocytes feed, forcing water over their mouths and collecting food particles, often with just their heads extended from the sediment. This is why they prefer deep pools with lots of organic matter. To reach maturity, amocytes undergo metamorphosis, just as a tadpole would, and transform into adult lampreys in the fall. After metamorphosis, the intestinal tract of brook lamprey becomes non-functional. The adults do not and cannot feed, a highly unusual trait for vertebrates. Just as a moth or a mayfly, the adults have only one purpose. In late March and early April, when water temperatures have reached about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the adults migrate upstream to riffles, where shallow water tumbles over the rocks. Here they begin building nests, small circular depressions, usually just above or within the riffles. They use their oral discs to pick up and move pebbles out of the way, and use their tails to clear gravel. Their oral discs also allow them to cling to rocks to maintain their position in the current, and take a break from the very energy-expensive work. Though they can move impressively large rocks relative to their body size, they can be a little overeager. During the height of spawning, Many individuals will work together to build nests, both males and females.
attaches to the female and they intertwine their tails and release eggs and sperm, mixing and burying them in the gravel with their tails. The swift, flowing water will provide plenty of oxygen for the eggs to develop, and the current will allow the hatchling amocytes to follow the current downstream into backwater pools. It is important for hatchlings to find a safe space to burrow quickly, as there are many predators that would gladly snatch them up. This time lapse shows darters eating eggs right out of a lamprey nest. If there is a significant barrier between larval and spawning habitat, adults will not be able to get upstream to spawn, and the population will die out or be unable to colonize past the barrier. Brook lampreys are small species, so barriers to their spawning can be much smaller than other stream breeding fish, or even the larger sea lamprey. Even small waterfalls and low water crossings can present challenges, so larger structures such as dams can effectively halt brook lamprey reproduction above them. When humans modify streams, either as agencies, organizations, or individuals, it is important to consider how species like lampreys will be affected. Even seemingly harmless activities like rock stacking or building rock dams can have negative effects. Rocks in and out of the stream provide habitat and shelter for fish, invertebrates, reptiles, and amphibians, so it is important to leave them where they are. After spawning, the adults have exhausted their fat reserves that they acquired as larvae, and are unable to acquire any more. They die or are eaten by predators shortly after spawning. But they have completed their duty, extending the time of the lamprey, as their ancestors have countless times before, since before the time of the dinosaurs.